three, two. Welcome back uh, to NC Sports and the latest, the weekly news edition, with plenty of action on the water from around the globe. Australia's uh, Gold Coast uh, goes uh, center stage uh, for the XCAT World Series. Dubai takes a double plunge, while X-Dubai nails the win. Montfort and Ofringa win the PWA slalom in Alicate. Nautical Channel's Andy Banzil is on the pitch and has the report from Turkey. Off to Russia as Leigh McMillan and the Wave nail the hat trick with another win in St. Petersburg for Act 6 of the Extreme Sailing Series. The Beasts uh, win uh, real time, but France uh, rewrites uh, Fastnet race history, dominating in IRC and winning the 90th edition with Jerry Transfer and crew on the 11 meter Courrier de Lyon. The Rio 2016 countdown has officially begun. With just one year to go, top world class sailors tackle a key Olympic test event. ISAF intervenes in the Kite Wars to settle ongoing disputes. IKA retains the sanctioned World Championship, but Richard Branson's BKWC obtains a special status. MC Sports plunged into the action. UIM XCAT World Series uh, revved up Australia's Gold Coast fans over the weekend with some sensational racing at Jennings Park. Emotions were immediately stirred uh, by the XCAT run competition and especially by a heart-stopping capsize right on the finish line by boat number 7 Dubai with Saleh Maldidi and Asa Al Ali on board. Fortunately, both pilots were quickly rescued by safety operators unharmed. Italy's Giovanni Carpitella and Australian teammate Darren Nicholson took the overall win with T-Bone Station. We push hard to win, uh, to get uh, top three. We jump and we land like uh, on the one side, we slide between two big waves in the middle. We slide a little bit and roll up. That's it. Sunday's Gold Coast Grand Prix was once again a chase on Emirati's Arif Al Zafine and Nadir Bin Hendi. Ex Dubai, in fact, started in pole position and kept the lead, boasting average speeds of over 67 knots. At least until teammates Al Adidi and Al Ali met disaster for the second time in two days, with yet another capsize. With the red flag on the course, the reigning world champions then made the best of the restart to hold on to first and take home the very fitting surfboard trophies. It was a very excellent start we had. It was tough. The, uh, the weather was getting worse every every lap. But as you know, ex-Dubai is always number one. We'd like to give this trophy to our highness, uh, Sheikh Hamdan Mohammed, and all to the victory team. Huge uh, second place for Tom Barry Cotter and Ross Williton on XCAT Australia Gold Coast who made the best of their home waters advantage and proved that this top nautical nation can also play a big role in power boating. Third place honors went to Italy's a six with Matteo Nicolini and Tommaso Polli. Now also third overall in the 2015 season, respectively behind the teams Abu Dhabi and the Dubai. The UIM XCAT World Series will return to the Emirates for the last two events of the season this November. France's uh, Pierre Mortfont and uh, Sarah Kita Ofringa from Aruba secured a victory at the PWA Alachati Slalom World Cup last uh, Sunday. Closing with a 32-point lead, uh, this was Mortfont's uh, very first uh, taste of victory as he pushed back Italians Roescher and Yakino to second and third. Similar lead for the young but already veteran multiple freestyle world champ Ofringa, now with her sights on a second slalom title. Marion Mortfond finished with a second for France, and local talent at Kagla Kubata completed the podium. A 
Article Channel host Andy Van Zyl was on the pitch in Turkey, preparing a full half-hour special on the Salachati World Cup. Here's a brief moment from her exclusive chat with Sarah Kita. Hi, NC Sports fans. I'm Andy Van Zyl. I'm here with the lovely Sarah Kita, who is from the Caribbean, and she's leading the women's rankings at the moment. And you have a really good record here at Alachati. Tell yeah. us a little, you won three, three titles in three years. Yeah, Alachati is one of my, actually maybe my favorite place on tour. It's the seventh time I'm here. Um, it's the first time I got on a podium for slalom here. I finished second the first year I came here. And I've won the event three times. Um, the, the conditions are similar to where I'm from, Aruba. It's kind of flat water and the wind is not super strong. And I guess it just suit me. Um, besides that, I like hanging out with the Turkish people here. It's always a good time. Everybody's really friendly. The food is really good. Boasting 18 podium finishes, including seven wins in the 32 races held, Leigh McLennan and the Wave Muscat crew kept up their stellar performance in St. Petersburg, Russia, for Act 6 of the 2015 Extreme Sailing Series. A hat-trick victory after winning in Cardiff and Hamburg that was also marked by the complete debacle of their main rivals, the Danes on SAP Extreme, who finished with a surprisingly dismal last of place. So we knew we had to kind of do as much as we can to to kind of protect the overall kind of series and and um, they had a, they couldn't quite get themselves out the starting block and, and get their heads around the venue and it kind of played into our hands so you know once we're in a solid position we have to kind of make sure that we're kind of trying to open up the gap as best we can. <laughs> A patchy and shifty eight-knot breeze uh, dancing uh, from east to west welcomed sailors on the River Neva short track as teams also tackled with a treacherous two-knot tide. Leading the series by a point uh, just uh, two acts ago, SAP Extreme co-skippers Graham Hansen and Kostner never did get into the rhythm and ultimately struggled at the end of the pack. Now they trail by eight points in third overall, a gap that the Wave Muscat can and will bank on. Russian fans instead witnessed the strong rise of the Italians, skippered by Lorenzo Bressani and with Enrico Zennaro on tactics. The Azzurri nailed an encouraging second place in their debut season. Another third place for the always consistent Hagara and Steinacher on Austria's team Red Bull, who now leap in second overall in the series. Quality finish for British team GAC Pindar, taking a fourth place, no doubt thanks to the arrival of Kiwi co-skipper Adam Minopio. Next uh, stop for Act 7, the ultimate event of the season will start in Istanbul on October 1st, while the big uh, Sydney final is scheduled for mid-December. Pretty much as expected, uh, Maxi's uh, Trimaran Spindrift 2 and Monohal Comanche rounded the rock first and then uh, celebrated their respective line honor victories at the Fastnet Race uh, 2015 late last week. Uh, yet it would take a few days before the real winners would be decided under the IRC rating system, as the fleet of over 350 boats gradually reached a port in Plymouth. This will be remembered as one of the slowest editions of this offshore sailing classic, now celebrating a remarkable 90th anniversary. It was a grueling race where light wind experience paid huge dividends. It was also a phenomenal parade of sails that included high-tech beasts like the Mod 70s, Imoka 60s, VORs, and a host of Super Maxi. 603 nautical miles of pure, full-on racing to and from the Fastnet Rock. The Celtic Sea also offered 36 hours of windless conditions that gradually reshuffled the different packs and the leading position. On the final tally, France proved to be a dominating force, claiming seven of the top ten spots under IRC rating. On his 13th attempt, Jerry Tronceau and the crew of Courrier du Lyon, a series JPK 10.80 in the IRC 3 division, claimed victory at this 2015 Rolex Fastnet race. The 
following eight days of racing, Olympic sailing hopefuls got a taste of what's to come as the Aquese Rio International Sailing Regatta came to an end this weekend. This is where they'll meet in their quest for gold, silver, and bronze in exactly one year. Well, almost uh, since the highly contaminated official sailing venue of Marina da Gloria is still undergoing a thorough cleanup under IOC and ISAF monitoring. This test event revealed an extremely even playing field, with 19 nations sharing in on the medal bounty. Aussies Belcher and Ryan once again dominated the men's 470s, and Americans Hager and Provencha topped the women's division. Britain Giles Scott kept up his leadership in the Finns, just as Kiwis Bowling and Duke in the 49ers. While local superstars Sofiati Graal and Kunze got a taste of their Brazilian gold in the ladies' 49er effects. Italy's Francesco Marai capped a surprise win in men's laser, while in women's laser radio, Lithuania's Gintare Volungevichute Scheidt held back the competition. Australia secured a second gold with Waterhouse and Armanin in the Nakra 17. Chathleen Picon successfully defended the French colors in women's RSX, while on the men's court, China dominated with Aichen Wang. The International Sailing Federation has clearly been pressed on all sides in recent weeks to resolve the ongoing kite wars between IKA and the new Virgin Circuit. In what appears to be a compromise of solution, ISAF has now artfully ratified the status quo. The International Kiteboarding Association, IKA, has de facto won its battle, maintaining the sole right to hold a world championship, a decision that perhaps dampens a Richard Branson's global ambitions. Yet this could be just a small marketing glitch, which will not even change the seat in VKWC, now an unsanctioned World Cup series. Only the IKA's European and Asian kiteboard tours will remain valid for a World Champ title. In a delicate balancing act, ISAF has also granted its prestigious special status rank to the new Virgin Kite Surf World Cup. A prerogative given only to major events like the America's Cup, the Volvo Ocean Race, or the Extreme Sailing Series, among just a handful of circuits. With both organizations still in a brawl and claiming event ownership, athletes are now competing at the German Classic in St. Peter Ording. Stay tuned for more NC Sports updates on this kite saga in the coming edition. It's not over, there's always more. Meet the future Olympians. This is Saturday at 7 p.m. Join the current on Nautical Channel for The Buzz with top highlights, interviews, and results from the 420 and 470 Junior European Championship in Bulgaria. Plunge into the action with NC Sports.